All right, so we're recording this session. So after, you know, we'll be able to share it um, with those who desire to view it in their own time. Amen. Um, I know I have a very scary um, subject line, but, you know, I just put that subject line because um, of the word of the Lord that came unto me, amen, when the Lord was um, downloading, amen, his word and his mind in my heart, amen. And so you'll see on your screen, um, flesh and bread eaters and blood drinkers. Um, right off the bat, for those who are carnal minded, you may be thinking that um, I'm going to talk about some cannibalism or, or, you know, some witchcraft kind of stuff. But um, no, that's not where we're going. We're going to talk about Jesus. Amen. Amen. So the subject is about Jesus, but we're going to speak in the context as how Jesus would have expressed himself in the book of John chapter 6, amen, and we're going to talk about it a little bit. And uh, before we do that, though, we're going to start off in John chapter 1, just to build some foundation, lay some foundation, and amen, establish as we go along. And I'm dealing here with uh, the subheading, the word made flesh, the word made flesh, a very familiar term to those who are believers and familiar with the word of God. Um, the Bible says, and let's, you know, follow us in, your, in the Bible. You should have your Bible. It's Bible study. It's not, you know, just for you to, amen, just look at us. But we want the word of God to reach in your soul, amen, to transform your mind. The Bible says here in John 1, I'm going to read from verse 1 to 5. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Amen. I think that is, amen, not too difficult to understand. Praise God. The Bible said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Amen. If you go to Genesis chapter 1, you'll read, amen, the statement that says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the Bible teaches that uh, the, the earth was without form and void, amen, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Bible teaches that the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, and there God began to utter his word, amen, amen. And that was at the beginning. He began to speak, amen, things into existence, Amen. So the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Amen. So it was God in action. Amen. Amen. It was God expressing himself and everything that the Lord speak. Amen. It came to pass in its time. Amen. And the Bible says, all things were made by him. Him who? All things were made by God, by his word. Amen. And without him was not anything made that was made. Without God's word, there was not anything made that was made. And the Bible says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. So in God's word is life. In God, there is life. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says, and the light shineth in the darkness. In Genesis, the scripture said, Jesus said, let this, God said, let there be light. And there was light. Amen. The word that was spoken, amen, brought, up, brought about that which God had intended down to every details of it. Amen. And the Bible said, and the darkness comprehended it not. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. Who was in the world? God was in the world, and the world was made by him, not by them, by him. Amen. And the world knew him not. The world never recognized, amen, that it was the great God who stepped out and said, let there be light, and there was light. It is he, amen, that was now in the world, amen, among men, in the form of man, amen. And the Bible said, 
and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Listen, the name of the Lord is very, very important. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just by believing on his name, amen, you have made yourself, amen, accessible, amen, to be called or to become the sons of God. Amen. For the Bible says, but as many as receive him, when you receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The name of Jesus Christ is very essential in the salvation plan of the Lord. There is no salvation outside of the name of Jesus Christ. There cannot be salvation with the exclusion of the name of Jesus Christ. It is tied to the name of Jesus Christ. This is why we talk so much about the name of the Lord, because salvation Amen. Comes in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. Amen. This is talking about the birth of Jesus. Amen. It's talking about the coming of Jesus. Amen. The birth of Jesus had nothing to do with flesh and blood. Amen. It, it had nothing to do with, amen, with a man and a woman, amen, coming together. No, it was the work of God himself. The Bible teaches that the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary, that she would conceive that holy thing that was in her womb. Amen. So no man had anything to do with it. Amen. And so it was a divine act of God himself, amen, to bring forth, amen, his only begotten son, amen, which was his express, expressed image, amen, which was his body, which he also called son of man, servant, amen, lamb, amen. These are all names describing, amen, that body of God, the body that God would manifest himself in, as it is written at verse 14. The Bible says, and the word was made flesh. Jesus Christ, the man Christ Jesus, was God's word. Amen. Made flesh. Amen. The Bible said the word was made flesh. Amen. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. So I want you to keep this in mind that the word was made flesh. Keep that in mind. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And keep in mind that the word was with God and the word was God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so... We want to travel in the book of John, chapter 6 now. Amen. And uh, we're going to read from verse 25. And I have here, there is a hung hunger and a thirst in man that only the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ can satisfy. Amen. In John, chapter 6, reading from verse 25. The Bible says, and when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he seek me not because he saw the miracles, but because he did eat of the loaves and were filled. So here you have some people following Jesus for food. Amen. You know, people have different motives why they go to church. Amen. Some people go to church because, you know, they're looking for a wife or they're looking for a husband. Some men, they hear that, you know, ch uh, church women, they are faithful to their husband. So they decide that, listen, you know, I'm going to go into church and I'm going to see if I could find me one of those church women. So people go to church 
Amen. For different reasons. Not everybody go to church for Jesus. And here you have some example of some people. Amen. They would have seen Jesus done miracles, but you know, that, that wasn't of interest for uh, interest to them. They were only concerned about the food, the fish and bread. Amen. And Jesus knew their intention. So we cannot hide our mask, our true intentions and motive from God. You may be able to deceive a man or a woman, but you certainly don't have the capacity to deceive God who searched the heart and tried the rain. And so we as a people must ensure that our motives are right. That's why the scripture said they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth, amen, if we come, amen, with deception in our heart, with the wrong intention, the Lord already know you, amen, and that which you're offering as worship is rejected even before you start, amen, because your heart is already revealed unto the Lord, yeah, you know, we are like an open book before God, praise the Lord, the Bible said at verse 27, um, Jesus said unto them, labor not for the meat which perishing. So they made every effort to follow Jesus for food, but Jesus was giving them some good counsel right now. He said, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. So if you're looking for something that can last beyond this life, then you got to look to Jesus, amen. If you want, amen, treasures that, amen, that dust and muff cannot corrupt, where thieves cannot break in and steal your gold or steal your, you know, that which you consider to be valuable, then I would advise you in the name of Jesus Christ that make an investment in Jesus, make an investment in the kingdom of God. And it does not require money. Amen. It doesn't require, amen, any gold or silver. What God is looking for is our hearts. Amen. And if we give him our hearts, we do it well. At verse 28, it said, Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God that he believe on him whom he hath sent. Look how simple the Lord make things for us. Amen. He make it very simple. You just need to believe on one. And that one is Jesus. Amen. Amen. You just need to believe on one. It's simple. It's hard. It's not hard to, you know, just believe on one and remember one and look to one. Amen. One is a very simple number. Amen. Just one. Here is one. You don't have to put up another finger. Amen. So Jesus said, you just got to believe on him, not on them. You don't have to believe on them. Believe on him whom the father had sent. Amen. Amen. Lord, make it simple for us. Amen. There's no need to remember three and, you, you know, you dot your forehead, you dot, you know, your navel, you dot your, your left shoulder and your right shoulder, and then you look up in the sky. I don't know what you're looking at. You need to keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Come on, look, sir. Look to him. Amen. Believe on him. Amen. That's simple. Amen. All this confusion about Trinity and Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Believe on him. Amen. That's it. Thank God for the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Maybe it's too simple. Some people, amen, get confused at it at, at its simplicity. They, you know, they, they can't believe it's that simple. Praise the Lord. They believe on him. The Bible said at verse 30, amen, amen. They said therefore unto him, what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe this. So now these people are sign followers. You have some people who are sign followers. Like many people who are not saved today, they're waiting for a major sign. They're waiting to see the sky turn red. Then they will believe the word of God, but that might be too late. They're, they're waiting to see some strange things happening, but yet strange things are happening, and they still have not believed. That's why Jesus said, let them hear the prophets who are among them, because if they can't hear the prophets, 
spirits who are among them. They're not going to believe a man, though he come from the dead. They won't believe him. They won't take heed to the warning from a man who come from the dead. And it is true. Amen. Because look what's happening in the world today. And people still, many, not repenting, still not making changes in their life, still won't give up fornication, still won't give up adultery, still won't stop being a whoremonger. Amen. Still won't uh, get unforgiveness out of their heart. Still won't practice sin, even though they see in the world. Amen. Al Almighty God is, is, is falling apart. The word of God is being fulfilled before our eyes. And so they were looking for a sign. They wanted Jesus to show them a sign that they may believe him. Amen. And they said, what dost thou work? And they said, our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not, the, not, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Amen. Uh, most of you will be familiar with the story with the children of Israel uh, when they were hungry and they were murmuring before God. God fall manna from heaven and fed them. And one time he gave them, I believe, something called quail for meat. And they ate so much that it began to come out of their nose. Can you imagine God delivered these people out of bondage, out of the oppression of Pharaoh's land and Pharaoh's house and after God delivered them with a strong arm out of Pharaoh's house out of slavery these same people begin to complain and murmur and begin to say listen it's better that we go back to Egypt because in Egypt we used to get fish Hmm? They didn't remember the oppression that, that fear brought upon them. I know he wanted to kill them. Amen. But God preserved them that the more fear, amen, uh, persecuted them or afflicted them. The Bible said the more they multiplied and they forgot all of that. And they begin to murmur against God and begin to desire to go back to Egypt. They desired, they rather go back into bondage just to eat fish. My God Almighty, they forgot the marvelous deliverance that Jesus Christ gave just to bring them out of slavery. Amen. I would say to the fellow brethren, don't forget what God has done for you. Don't forget where you're coming from. Don't forget the mess that Jesus Christ delivered us from. And don't seek our desire, amen, to put back your hand in the mess that God delivered you out of, amen, when God saved you and clean you up, amen. You was a drunk, my God, and God bring you to sobriety, make you sober. My God, don't desire to go back in the rum shop, amen. Don't desire to be go, go back to a lifestyle of humanizing and a whoremongering. No, if God deliver you out of that, don't go back. Amen. Praise the Lord. Stay with God. And so the Bible said that, verse 33, that for the bread of God is he. So remember this. The bread of God is he. It is, he is a he. The bread, God's bread is he. Amen. Not a it. Amen. The bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. So the bread that came down from heaven is a bread of life. Amen. He gave it life unto the world. And it is because of Jesus coming into this world. Why we have hope. Why we can have peace in the midst of the storm. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want us not to forget that. The Bible said that. Then said they unto him. Lord. Evermore. Give us this bread amen let me just turn off this phone here amen they said lord evermore give us this bread so now they were requesting that bread and jesus said unto them i am the bread of life he that cometh to me shall never hunger now i have there that, that there is a hunger and a thirst that is in man that only the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ can satisfy. Pay attention to this. To take care of the hunger that will be in a soul, you have to come to Jesus. It requires you to come to him. If, if, if there is a hunger in your soul, the solution is take a step towards Jesus. 
come to him. And it said, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So to take care of the thirst that is in your soul, it requires believing on Jesus. Coming to Jesus takes care of the hunger. Amen. When you believe his word, believe upon his name, amen, it does something to satisfy the thirst of your soul. That's why the Bible said in Matthew 5 that, amen, blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. When you seek to know Jesus Christ, when you, you know, have a desire and a delight in Jesus, amen, it does something for your soul that rum cannot do, that having sex cannot satisfy, that having money in the bank, amen, cannot fulfill. There is something, amen, when you have that desire for God that only him, can fulfill and satisfy. So you want, amen, that hunger in your soul, amen, to be filled, then you need to come to Jesus. Amen, you want that thirsting of your soul, amen, to be satisfied. Then you need to come to Jesus. You need to believe upon him. Believe, take care of the thirst. Coming to Jesus, take care of the hunger. When somebody is hungry, it means that they're lacking food. Amen. When somebody is thirsty, it means that they're lacking water or fluid. Amen. When somebody is dehydrated, amen, the, the, the medical practitioners, they string them up on a drip system and allow water to flow through the veins to come back in their body that they can be nourished again. Amen. Because, you know, water is very essential to the supporting of life. Well, I want you to know that's on the natural side of things, on the spiritual side, amen. It takes Jesus, amen, amen, the bread of heaven, amen, to satisfy the hungry, or the hunger rather of your soul. And when you believe upon him, he will take care of the thirst. And I'm going to go into more of that as we go along. Praise the Lord. And when you go down to... Amen. Verse 36 of John chapter 6. Jesus said here, But I said unto you that he also have seen me and believe not. And there are many people like that. They will see the mighty works, the mighty acts of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Even in their own life, they would see, amen, things that happen and they could only declare that it had to be the mercies of God that kept them and spared them. But yet, they would not allow that to drive them into a relationship to know Jesus more. Amen. And you don't want to remain in such a state. Amen. So the Bible said that he also have seen me and believe not. And he said, all that the father giveth to me or giveth me shall come to me. Listen to what Jesus said. Everyone that his father give unto him shall come to him. And Jesus can't lie. So there is a people that have been foreordained to be saved. And as the Lord liveth, every one of them shall come to Jesus Christ in their rightful time. Amen. And he said, and him that cometh to me, I will no wise cast aside. You have to come to Jesus. He has already done what he needed to do. Now it's your turn to make a step to my unsafe friend. Amen. You are the one now is now required. Amen. To make a step to Jesus. He has already came down from heaven, laid down his life, went to the cross, died. Amen. Was buried, rose triumphantly from the grave. And he declared, I have got the keys of death and hell which used to bring torment to, amen, the people. They had no hope until Jesus came. And so now it's our time to step to Jesus. We've got to come to him. And if you make that step to him, the Bible says he will not cast, you know, cast us aside. He will know wise, cast out, amen. And when you read Hebrews 11, verse 6, it says this, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. So you have to believe. When you're coming to God, you have to come with belief. You have to come by faith. You cannot come in doubt. Amen. You must believe that God 
He is that he is. Amen. The isness of God is his continuous state of being that never change. Amen. Let me say it again. The isness of God is his continuous being, his state of being that never changes. And the Bible teaches that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you're going to come to Jesus, you got to come by faith, believing who he is. Amen. And the Bible says, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And this is the key, diligently seek him. Many of us are not seeking after God diligently. And I want to tell you, if you don't find that, amen, that we are seeking God diligently, then you can't get the reward. And the reward is, they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. That's a promise God can't lie. If you have not yet been filled, it means you have not yet fulfilled, amen, the criteria, amen, for God to be pleased to fill you. Amen. You got to diligently seek him. When you diligently seek him, you will get your reward. And the reward is eternal life down on the inside. Praise the Lord. And the Bible said, for I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. So Jesus Christ, amen, he came to fulfill specific things, not according to his own will, but according to the will of the Father. Amen. And the Bible says, and this is the Father's will. Hear the Father's will. Listen to God's will. Which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. Everyone that would have tasted of the salvation of the Lord, it is the will of God that all of us be saved. When the trumpet of God is sound, that all of us, Make the first resurrection. That's God's will. Only you, amen, can rub yourself out of this will. Only you have the power, amen, to exclude yourself from this will. Not even the devil have the power, amen, to exclude you from this will of God. Express, amen. Only you and I praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible said at verse 40, and this is the will of God that sent me that everyone which seeth the Son and believe on him. Right back to him again. You don't need to believe on them. You need to believe on him, the Son of the living God. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. And when you believe on him, amen, you may have everlasting life. And the Bible says, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Bible said the Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. Amen. The Jews never liked that statement. Amen. They, th they thought that Jesus was, amen, making himself to be something that he was not. Amen. And some of them were thinking carnally. They, 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 they couldn't understand the speech of Jesus Christ. Even as some people right now don't understand, but we're going to get further into the scriptures. Praise the Lord Jesus. And the Bible said at verse uh, 47, and as I have here, Jesus Christ is that bread of life from heaven. He said, verily, verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Amen. And some people, let me, let me, let me insert this right away. To believe on Jesus is more than saying, I believe in Jesus. Because everybody said that from time to time. Most people do. Amen. To believe on Jesus, amen, is proven not by just what you say, but by your action, by your deeds. Amen. Your deeds define whether or not you really believe on Jesus. Amen. And the Bible said this, Very, very I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. And then hear Jesus go, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. So the bread that the children of Israel ate in the wilderness, that was a, a bread that couldn't give them sustenance beyond this life. Amen. So they all died. Amen. And Jesus said here, this is the bread which cometh down from heaven. 
It says that a man may eat thereof and not die. So Jesus is saying, listen, if you eat of this bread, Jesus Christ, you shall not die. I can just only imagine how the scribes and the Pharisees were like fuming. What, what is this man talking about? Eating him. Is he, is, he, is he preaching cannibalism? Let's keep reading. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. You so much time Jesus said it. It seemed as if Jesus wanted to drive this in the head. <laughs> he kept repeating himself. He said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. Hold it. Well, on Jesus, you're getting worse. No, you're even describing the bread to be your flesh. No, Jesus, something wrong with you. No, nothing is wrong with him. Remember, we read in John chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Amen. And when you go down to verse 14, the Bible says, and the word was made flesh. Amen. And dwelt among us. So Jesus Christ was the embodiment of God's word, the manifested word. Amen. So when Jesus was speaking, amen, about his flesh, he was speaking also to the context of his flesh, being the word made flesh. So the words of Jesus Christ contain life, and his flesh also had life in him. And we go more into that. Praise the Lord Jesus. And Jesus began to tell them that, listen, and the bread that I will give is my flesh speaking to him, laying down his life, speaking also to going to that cross of suffering, amen, of agony and pain, paying the penalty for sin, amen. And he said here, I will give, I, I, and the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. So he gave his flesh so that the world may have life, may have hope, and the Bible said the Jews therefore strove among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Who knows? If I was there, I would probably ask the same question. Amen. Because, you know, they were carnal-minded. Amen. They were thinking carnally. And so they were wondering, you know, what kind of strange doctrine this man bringing to us about eating his flesh. Amen. Let's keep going. Praise the Lord. And the Bible said... In verse 53 to 58, then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except he eat the flesh of the Son of Man, my Lord, and drink his blood, he have no life. Now this, by this, I, 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 I suspect that the scribes and Pharisees probably would have been filled with madness. <laughs> because now Jesus taking it a, a step further. And he said, except he eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, he have no life in you. You're dead. <laughs> Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth up this bread shall live forever. These Things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they heard this, they said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? I wonder who can hear it right now, even as I speak. Now, Jesus referring to 
the eating of his flesh and the drinking of his blood is beyond amen what some may think in the natural and remember the word was made flesh and so jesus was speaking about his word amen loving his word eating up his word amen and so in the book of matthew 4 the scripture said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So Jesus referring to his flesh is referring to his word because his flesh, amen, was the word made flesh. Amen. And so the, 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 the Pharisees and the scribe couldn't see through, amen, the natural aspect of it. Uh, they, they were blinded to the spiritual aspect of it. And when it talks about the drinking of the blood, let's talk about that. Amen. About Because he didn't just say, eat my flesh. Amen. But he also said, you got to drink his blood. How do you drink Jesus' blood? My God. How do you drink Jesus' blood? That's a question. Let me see if anybody can answer. Let me ask that question. I'm opening up now for, uh, for an answer for this question. How can you drink Jesus' blood. Anybody who want to attempt to answer that question? Let me hear you. Anyone? 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 The word. The word. When you study the word. When you study the word? Yes. Okay. All right. Anybody? You know, the word. The word. All right. Anybody else? I think spiritually. How you, then, all right, tell me, how are you going to drink the blood spiritually? Like, um, how do I explain it now? Like, uh, it's like a believe in your heart. It's like a believe, yeah, like you said, I drink all the blood and I eat up the flesh. Like, it's actually a believe, just believe in the um, spiritually drinking it. Like, it doesn't have right. to be In one aspect, at the, at the, um, the, the Passover, he took the cup and said, um, this is my flesh, break the bread and said, this is my flesh, eat of it. And he said, this is my blood. It's the New Testament of my blood, um, drink of it. But apart from that, when you repent, the blood is applied to you. And you understand? Mm -hmm. The blood uh, is applied to your life. Yeah, but, it, it, well, how it, do you drink it? Because Jesus said, you gotta drink it. Okay. Um, Lord in, Supper. In in, in, in a large supper, when, when you said this is the New Testament of my of my blood. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking I'm thinking that you're probably speaking to suffering. Um as you suffer with him, you know, you're partaking of that debt, and you know, debt as it symbolizes you losing, um, you know, it, it could have that effect of you losing um blood. I mean, life of the flesh um is in the blood and suffering surely. Um, could speak to one partaking of um, drinking of his blood, I would imagine, you know. Amen. Um, I know, kind of weird, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, Amen. Super, man. Amen. You're, 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 you're on to something about Iran. Praise God. Thank, I appreciate, um, you know, all the, the feedback and the sharing from the brethren. Praise the Lord. This is something that... My voice to this, this is my kind of topic. Okay, go ahead. Let me hear you. So blood signifies the life because mm -hmm. where there is blood, there is life. All right. And so, and so Jesus said that the, my words are spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they are life. And they are life. Yeah. And, and I also like that the, the blood is in the flesh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, All the right. life is in the blood. And so life Jeremiah said that that word was found and I did eat them. Amen. Amen. All right, brother. Thank you very much. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's take it. All right. You're on to where I am. You're, you're, you're on. You're very on to what the word of God is saying. In the book of Leviticus, let's go there. Amen. The Bible teaches that the life of the flesh is in what? It's in the blood. It's in the blood. Praise God. Amen. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 10. It says here, And whosoever, whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, 
I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and I will cut him off from among his people. Now, under Old Testament law, and it's still relevant today, amen, you're not supposed to be eating blood or eating meat with blood, amen, that is forbidden, and it's still forbidden today, amen, and the Bible tells you at verse 11, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. So it is the blood, amen, that is that, amen, uh, thing that the Lord will accept as an atonement for the soul. And it says, therefore, I said unto the children of Israel, no soul of you shall eat blood. Neither shall any stranger that sojourn among you eat blood. But here comes Jesus, who was a Jew. Amen, amen. The man Christ Jesus was a Jew. Amen. And uh, here he's telling the people not just to eat his flesh, but also to drink his blood. When these people were told under the Mosaic law, don't eat blood. So this sounded very contradictory to these men. It sounded like hearsay. It sounded like strange doctrine. So they weren't just, you know, uh, going to just receive that just like that with the teaching that they had before. But there's revelation and understanding to be had concerning, amen, the drinking of the blood of Jesus Christ. Now watch this. Um, if the life of the flesh is in the blood, and Jesus said this, that my flesh is that which I give, that the world may have life. And he said that you have to eat the flesh. Therefore, in order to get the blood to drink, the flesh has to be broken. You understand? You can't get, amen, when you get a cut or you get a bruise, what, what happened? Blood come out, you bleed. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Amen. And therefore, in order to get the blood out of the flesh, it simply means the flesh had to be broken. I'm going further. Therefore, to get the blood out of God's word, because not only must you eat his word, amen, you got to drink the blood that is in it. In order for you to get the blood of the word, amen, the, 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 the word has to be broken. Amen, it has to be rightly divided so that you can get the life out of the word. Listen, millions of people, billions of people read the word of God, but the life that is locked up in the word, they won't be able to extract it until it is broken down right or rightly divided unto them for them to understand. Because Jesus said this, the word that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So there is life in the word, but in order for the life to be released, it got to be broken. And so the scripture said the life of the flesh is in the blood. Amen. So in God's word, there is life. In God's word, there is, amen, nourishment for you. Yes. But you can't get it except the word is broken, except it is rightly divided. Amen. Precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. Amen. I don't want to jump amen. the gun. Hold on. Let me come back down. Yes, Amen. And so watch this. You have the religion they call Christianity, which is supposed to represent those who are followers of Jesus Christ. Amen. But hear the reality of this. If the bread, if the flesh is not broken properly, then the blood won't come out. The life of the word won't be released unto those people that they may have eternal life. That's why many will come unto the Lord on that day and say, Lord, haven't I prophesied in your name? Haven't I cast out devils in your name? But did you get the blood? Did, did, did you get the life out of the flesh? Amen. Did, did you get the life out of it? And so preachers, ministers, pastors, you got to know how to break bread. Amen. You have to know how to get the blood out of the flesh so that the people can get life from the word of God. People who have problems in their marriage, there is a word for that. Amen. There is a, there's a solution for that. But if you don't know how to break bread to extract the life out of that flesh, out of the word of God, people can be married 
have the Holy Ghost baptized in Jesus Christ's name and living in misery. Amen. And no help come to them. No life come to them. No deliverance come to them. Praise the Lord Jesus. When you read John 19, verse 31 to 35, pay attention. It says this at verse 32. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other. This was Jesus when he was on the cross. And uh, which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, dead, dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. Now remember, Jesus told the people they got to eat his flesh and drink his blood. Now, the body of Jesus Christ was the word made flesh. These soldiers who pierced Jesus' side, while they would have thought that they were doing evil, but this was meant to happen for the good of the world. Because when they pierced Jesus' side, they were releasing the life of the flesh, which is in the blood. And that life that of the flesh needed to hit the earth. Because listen, if that blood never hit the earth, none of us would have uh, the hope of salvation today. That blood needed to touch the dust of the earth. For we are made from the dust of the earth. So when these men went and pierced the side of Jesus, they were releasing the life of the flesh. Likewise, when we preachers ministered, amen, God give us a word and we break that word, we break bread, we rightly divide it, amen, we speak as oracles of the living God, we speak thus saith the Lord, we're releasing life unto the people, which is like drinking the blood of Jesus Christ, amen. I, I don't know if you're following me, I hope I don't lose anyone. Amen. And I hope I'm making Go sense. Ahead. Good Amen. teaching, sir. Good teaching. My God. And so yes, when, they, when they pierced Jesus' side, notice it's not just blood came out only neither. Out came blood and water. Amen. And that's very significant. And so we'll get on that later. So piercing Jesus' side was like opening up the word. I think in Revelation, the Bible talk about the seals. No man was able to unseal it. Amen. Only Jesus was able to unseal it. That's like the word being locked up. You have not the understanding of God's word, so you don't know how to please God because you have not the understanding of the word. The reason why many people are caught up in a false religion because their leaders not breaking the bread right. They're not piercing that word, that flesh right which is God's word. They're not rightly dividing the word. So when, when, when the word is not being rightly divided, then the people can't get the life that they're supposed to get out of the word. For Jesus said they are spirit and they are life. But only when it is rightly divided, you activate the spirit and life in it. Amen. That's right. And so when it is not broken properly, the people, amen, are robbed of the benefit that they should be getting from the word of God. Or if the people don't have a desire and a love for the flesh and for the blood. Amen. And when I say that, I'm talking about the word and the understanding of the word and the life that is in the word. If you don't have that love, my God, you're dead. You're dead. Amen. For the word is life. Amen. And so they pierced Jesus' side and out came blood and water. And because that took place, you and I tonight have hope because that blood of Jesus hit the ground. Amen. And that was releasing life. Amen. The flesh, amen. The flesh of the blood or the flesh or the life of the flesh is in the blood. Amen. In Colossians chapter 1, it says this verse 14. In whom... We have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Listen, the blood of Jesus Christ, and I'm speaking literally now, the blood of Jesus Christ, amen, that was shed. It is that that allows us to have redemption and forgiveness of sins. 
Amen. That way, if, if you sin against God, amen, after you would have been saved, you can go back to the Lord and say, Lord, be merciful. Amen. Lord, forgive me. Cleanse me. Wash me another time. Lord, I mess up. Lord, I stumble. Lord, I did wickedly. Be merciful. And because of that blood that came out of his side, amen, Jesus is able to show mercy and forgiveness of our sins. Amen. The Bible says, who is the express or who is the, the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. Amen. Jesus Christ is the, in, the, the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of every creature. Amen. And so we see when God made Adam. Amen. And he wanted to, amen, bring forth out of Adam a woman. The Lord went to the side of Adam and took out a rib and formed woman, presented that woman to Adam, flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. The Bible said these two shall be called one flesh. Amen. And so the woman came from his side. Likewise, when God, amen, want to bring forth the church, amen, he went to the side. Amen. That's why Jesus' side was pierced. Amen. They pierced his side. Amen. And out came blood, that which was needful to purchase the salvation of the church. Amen. And so Jesus had to die or the woman couldn't come forth. He had to go to sleep, you know, even though, you know, you know we say that Jesus died. Amen. He was really sleeping. Amen. He was sleeping. Amen. Like how Adam was put into a sleep to bring forth the woman, Jesus Christ slept for three days in the grave. Amen. His blood, amen, came from his side. And that's how we have the church today. Because he purchased our salvation according to Acts chapter 20, I believe verse 28. He purchased our salvation. Amen. With his own blood. Let me read it. Acts 20 verse 28. Take heed, and this is to the preachers and those who have, amen, a leadership role in the kingdom. You know, amen, you're leading God's people. The Bible said, take heed. Therefore, unto yourself, I have to take heed. You must take heed to yourself and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God. You see, you got to know how to feed God's people. That's what I'm talking about, knowing how to break bread. Amen. To feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So the price was his blood. And so we can't treat God's church, you know, amen, as if it is just any other thing. We have to treat it knowing that, listen, whatever we do, we must do it as unto the Lord. And make sure that which we, amen, are feeding God's people with is of the Lord. Amen. If bread is not broken properly, then amen, we could be causing the people to get spiritual diabetes. Amen. And all kind of spiritual condition that have them not being able to function the way that they should and to trust Jesus the way that they should. Amen. Amen. We are to ensure that we're anchoring people's faith in Jesus Christ. And when you're rightly, when you're breaking the bread right, when you're piercing the flesh, amen, to release the blood, amen, you will know how to do it by the Holy Ghost. Know what needs to be delivered that the people may be able not just to eat the bread, because many people are hearing the word of God, but they're not getting to drink the blood from the word because it's not rightly divided. And that's why you have Trinitarianism and all kind of ism and schism. That's why you have so many religion. Amen. You have men that are breaking bread that were not authorized to break bread. Amen. They don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth. And so the people can't get the life that is in the word. That is in the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. In 2 Timothy, listen to what the apostle in his writing wrote. Amen. And I want you to know that there is a right way to break bread, to release the life that is in it. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15 to 16, he said, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not 
to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to rightly divide God's word to release the life that is in it. Amen. So you got to be in the word. You got to hear from the Lord. Amen. And you got to be approved. Amen. We have too many unapproved. Amen. Bread breakers. And that create problems. And that's why we have so many different doctrines. The Bible said that we are supposed to mind the same thing. Speak the same thing. Having the same spirit of faith. We're supposed to walk by the same rule. Then why, why are we so divided many a times and things? Bread is not being broken right. Amen. The apostle said to Timothy, shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. In Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 to 10, it says, whom shall he teach knowledge? That's a question. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from milk and drawn from the breasts. There are many people that are still stuck on milk. The Bible said in the, the book of Peter, it says, as newborn babes, he must desire the sincere, sincere milk of the word. So in the same word, there is milk. And if the preacher know how to break the word, he's able to release milk to those who need milk. But then for those who need meat, the preacher has to be able to release the meat. Amen. That is locked up in the word. Amen. And so if you want to be taught knowledge, and if you want to understand doctrine, you got to get past the milk stage. Let me give you an example of the milk stage. My God, if you can't forgive somebody, you're still at milk stage. My God, if you can't love your neighbors as yourself, you're still at milk stage. If you can't bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for those that despitefully use you, you're still at milk stage. Amen. That's basic. That's one of the first teachings Jesus kick off his ministry with in Matthew chapter 5. Milk, the basic stuff. They used to say an eye for an eye, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But Jesus come and show them a more righteous way. Amen. If they take something from you, if they take your coat, give them the cloak also. Turn the other cheek. Those are milk. That's not meat, that's milk. Amen. And so, if you want to move past milk, then, amen, you have to be able to pass those tests that will come your way to try you in those different areas. Each of us will be tried at some point in time in our life in those areas. And not just one time. There might be many trying of, of that in your lifetime. Amen. But if you're stuck, not being able to forgive somebody who have done you wrong for years, 30 years, and you still have the person in your heart. Ah, you're not ready yet for doctrine. You still need to get milk. The Bible says, for precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Amen. So the word of God must be rightly divided so that the people can drink the blood that is in it because the life of the flesh is in the blood and jesus referred to his flesh amen as the word the living bread and he was the word made flesh john 6 63 and 65 it is the spirit that quickened that means it's the spirit that give life the flesh profited nothing. So right there and then you can know that Jesus was inviting the scribes and Pharisees to come with knife and fork and start to cut him to pieces and, and eat his literal flesh. Amen. But he was speaking about the word that he brought. Amen. And the Bible says, the words that I speak unto you. Here is it. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So I want you to know, not only we must eat Jesus' flesh, but we have to drink his blood 
But the blood has to be released. Amen. By how it is broken down. By how it is expounded. That's why the scripture said this. How can they hear without a preacher? How can they preach except they be sent? That's why the Bible said, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Every preacher must be a faith preacher. Every preacher of God must be one that, that, that express the word of God in such a way that people will put their trust in Jesus and believe upon him. Amen. If the preacher not helping you to root your faith and your trust in Jesus, my God, maybe, just maybe, he was not sent by the Lord. Amen. Because the Bible says, he whom God has sent, speak God's word. And he knows how to break bread, to release the life in it. Praise the Lord. And, and the Bible said this, and he said, therefore, and he said, therefore said I unto you that no man, no man, get this, no man can come unto me. You cannot come to Jesus except it were given unto him of the Father. Many people say, oh, I accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Yes, you did. Listen, if you come to this knowledge of God's great salvation, it wasn't because of you only just, you know, coming to him. It was he who draw you by his word. It was he, amen, that put that, amen, that, that, that thing in your heart that pull you to him. Amen, you have nations across the world that, you know, the people born into religion, you know, whether it be Muslim or, you know, um, um, uh, what, whichever other of those religion, Catholic, you know, I, I hear one uh, person tell me, listen, I born a Catholic and I'm gonna die a Catholic. And I said, my Lord, what an utterance. And so you and I could have been one of those persons who were born into one of these strongholds of a religion. And except it be the mercies of God that reach you and draw you, you would not be saved. So even in the saving of our soul, it is Jesus we got to give thanks. It's not because we are, you know, so righteous and we made the right choice. If God don't help you, it is he that will us even to do his will. Amen. So at the end of the day, all credit go right back to Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. And I have here, when the bread is broken right, it will reveal who is of God and who is not. Pay attention. In John 6, verse 67 to 71, it says this at verse 66. From that time, this is after Jesus would have talked about eating his flesh, drinking his blood. I am that bread that came down from heaven. It's when Jesus, after Jesus would have done, uh, delivered all that teaching and preaching. The Bible said from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. <laughs> after they hear all our Jesus talk about, about eating flesh and drinking blood. Some say, listen, why? Make you follow this man. You see, when the word of God is broken, right? And rightly divided, it will create separation. It will reveal who is of God and who, who really love Jesus and who really don't love Jesus the way that they should. So all of a sudden, these disciples who were following him all along for food, many of them, some follow him for the signs, and the miracles that he did. But when Jesus started to get down to the meat of the matter in terms of the kind of commitment that was required of them to get this eternal life, my God, some of them didn't see it as something they want to partake of. So they stopped following Jesus. I want to encourage you, now is a wrong time to stop following Jesus. Amen. Now is not a time to look back. Now is a time to look ahead. Amen. The apostle said, press towards the mark of the high calling. Amen. And so at verse 67, then said Jesus unto the twelve, will he also go? <laughs> you don't want to drink blood. You don't want to eat my flesh. You're going to leave me, Peter? Bartholomew, are you going to leave me? John, what about you? Huh? 
What about you, Andrew? Are you going to leave me? Will you also go? Amen. But listen to the response. Then, said, then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Right there and then you knew that Peter got the revelation of what Jesus was talking about when he was talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. Peter his apostles whom he had chosen, they knew what Jesus was talking about. For Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words, the words of eternal life. That's the eating of the flesh. And when it is broken, that's the drinking of the blood. When they get the understanding of the word, that you may act upon the word, that you may apply the word to your heart and benefit from it. And he said, and we believe. Listen to Peter. This is not a light, amen, declaration by Peter. He said, and we believe he wasn't even just speaking for himself he was speaking for the 12 for the 11 also he said and we believe and are sure that thou art the christ the son of the living god do you know who jesus is are you certain do you know jesus amen this is this, just listen to the statement of the apostle peter himself listen man we are sure <laughs> My God Almighty, you got to make your calling and your election sure. You got to make sure that you know who Jesus is. Amen. You got to know who Jesus is. Listen, many people know who Jesus was. Let me say it again. Many people know who Jesus was but they don't know who Jesus is. And that's the problem. That's why you have Trinitarianism. They know that Jesus was the son of God, but they don't know who he is. Amen. If, you see, when you know who Jesus is, and when we talk about who Jesus is, it speaks to his, uh, his consistent being that never change, which is, spirit the eternal father but when you talk to when you talk about who jesus was you're speaking to his manifestations throughout time to humanity to bring about salvation and to reveal himself unto man so at one time god manifested himself as a burning bush to moses one of the prophets, he was like a whirlwind. Amen. And so through time, there were different manifestations of the one God. But his isness never changed. Who he is can't change. But how he manifests himself and reveals himself to humanity can change over time. And now he has come. Amen. In the volume of the book. Amen. Jesus Christ came in the volume of the book. The word made flesh. The son of God. Is the same God that appeared to Moses. As a burning bush. That came as the son of God. In the son of God. In the son of God. The Bible said without controversy. Great is the mystery of God godliness god was manifested in the flesh what flesh the flesh that was word made flesh amen so it's one god that's why you just need to believe on him jesus you don't need to remember anything else just remember it is all wrapped up in jesus everything that god is was and will ever be for the saving of humanity is wrapped up in Jesus. And that's why the name of Jesus Christ is so important because the name connect the spirit to the flesh. Amen. It is the name that link the spirit of the living God to his flesh that he made for himself. Jesus Christ, the son of God. So when you glorify Jesus, you're glorifying God. 
because it was God that was manifested in the flesh. Amen. And you, you need to get that understanding and revelation. It was not just God sending his only begotten son. Yes, God sent his only begotten son means God sent him in a body in a womb. And that body was made for himself exclusively. Amen. It was made for the spirit to abide in. It was so exclusive that God gave that body his name. That Jesus said, I come in my father's name. In the book of Hebrews, it said that he inherited, by inheritance, he obtained a more excellent name. When you inherit something, when you inherit something, it means that it once was belonging to somebody else and was passed down to right. you. And was right. passed down to you. So the name of Jesus Christ belonged to the father. And right. when he decided that he was going to come among men for the saving of their soul. And he formed a body for himself to occupy in fullness, not in part. Listen, he was the fullness for the Bible said, for in him, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily in the body of the son of God was everything that God is. Praise the Lord and was Praise the Lord and will be for the saving of his people. So that body was so important that the body had to get the same name as the father. And that name is Jesus. That's why we say to you without any doubt, when you take on the name of Jesus Christ in water baptism, there is no need to talk about Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Those are the titles of the manifestation of God for the saving of man. Everything is wrapped up in Jesus Christ. When you say Jesus, when you do things in the name of the Lord Jesus, you're giving glory to God for the work that he has performed for the saving of your soul. You're acknowledging that the great I am came and walked among men. Don't you hear the apostle in the writing in John 1 said, he was in the world and the world was made by him. Only one made the world. The Bible didn't say the world was made by them. The world was made by him. Amen. Praise he the Lord. And I'm at verse 70. Jesus answered and answered them. Have not I chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So you see, right after Jesus would have talked about eating his flesh, drinking his blood, it started to expose and reveal, make manifest those who were of God and those who really wasn't of God. And that's why it's very important for the word of God to be preached right. Because if somebody's sitting in, in church all their life and, don't, and hearing the word of God preached and don't know that they're living in sin, something wrong. Something wrong. When the word of God goes forth, it creates separation. Amen. It's supposed to let every man know where he stands before God. For the word of God is like a mirror. It's able to show your reflection where you stand before God. So the word of God has to be preached in a manner that when it goes forth, amen, it may manifest that which is of God and that which is not of God. An unsafe person shouldn't come to church and leave feeling that they're saved when they have not obeyed the gospel. My God, when they come to church, they're supposed to know assuredly, my God, I'm not in the will of God, and I need to change. I need to repent of my fornication. I need to repent of my adultery. That will only happen when the word is rightly divided. But if the word, the bread is being broken in a manner that the people can't get the life out of it, that's not good. They won't be able to drink the blood, so they won't get life from the word. And so that's the condition of many of the religious organizations that exist. There are people who are sincere, who really want to serve God, but they are being led by those who don't know how to break bread. God never sent them to break bread. 
And so the life that they should be getting from the word of God, they can't get it. And so right as Jesus declared all these things, it exposed who were with him and who was not with him. Thank God the 12, or the 11 at least, the 11 out of the 12, amen, they affirm and express that they understood the message that Jesus Christ was delivering unto them. There is always going to be a devil amongst the pot. Always. All right. I have here, when bread is broken, let me get this out of the way. When bread is broken, right, your eyes will open, or will be opened, and you will know Jesus Christ for, he, for who he was and who he is. I talked a little bit about that already. Luke 24, 22 to 27 says this. Yeah, and a certain woman, let me check on the time. All right. Yeah, and a certain woman, uh, yeah, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. All right, this is talking about the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said. But him they saw not. That means they didn't see Jesus in the sepulchre. Then he said unto them, this was now Jesus speaking, I believe. He said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he began to break bread, right? He expounded, explained unto them in all the scriptures. You hear that? I wonder how long that, that sermon was that Jesus gave them because it didn't say in some of the scriptures, you know. The Bible said he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself, right? And then you know it was Jesus who was speaking to these people. Notice where Jesus called them for being slow to believe what was written. Fools, when you are slow to believe God, when you are slow to believe Jesus, you are being foolish. Jesus said, oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all you're not just supposed to believe some of what jesus said you must believe all that is written and spoken by our lord jesus christ and the bible said at verse 30 and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them he took bread watch this he took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to them now look what happened after he took bread Bless it and break it and give it to them. The Bible said, and their eyes were open. When the bread is broken right, and I'm talking about the word of God, when it's properly broken, your eyes will come open. And they knew him. You know why people see in tree and having a trinity concept? Because the bread that has been broken in their ears is not being broken properly. So the eyes can't be open. Amen. When the bread is broken right, when the word of God is rightly divided, your eyes will come open. When your heart is in the right place towards God, your eyes will come open. And you will know Jesus for who he is. And you will realize that he was not just Mary's little son. You know, you like, we like to sing, Mary had a little lamb. Some people only know the little lamb. But I want to introduce you to the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah that was in the lamb. There was a lion in the lamb. Praise the Lord. And the Bible said this. He took bread and blessed it and break and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened. And they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Right there and then, by the Spirit of God, I have understanding that when God's word is delivered right, people will understand. Those who really have a desire to serve God. That's why Jesus said this, 
My sheep know my voice. You see, God's sheep, they're listening for his voice. And a stranger, they will not follow. There is a people that God has ordained to be saved. And they're looking, they're listening to hear God's voice. And when they hear God's voice, they will follow him. And that's what we need to ask God to guide us into. Lead us to his sheep. Amen. Because it's the will of the Father that none that was given to our Lord be lost. Not one of them. But that they should all be raised up at the last day. That's the will of God. Amen. At verse 32, and they said one to another, did not, listen, look what happened when the bread is broken right. They said, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And while he opened up the scripture to us, are he opened to us the, the scriptures? You see what caused the burning of the heart? When the word of God is broken or pierced, right? My God, it do something to the heart. It will have an impact. Amen. It will have an impact because it's been, it is being uh, broken in a way that the life will come out of it. And you'll be able to drink Amen. From that blood, that blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The wisdom of God, the understanding from the Lord of the scripture, what he wants you to do, how he wants you to do it. For God is a meticulous God. You can't just do things, amen, as you please. He wants it to be done a certain way. Praise the Lord. And I'm moving right along. I'm pressing gas. Luke 24, 39 to 45. So Jesus would have appeared among some of them. Some of them were unbelieving in spite of him appearing before them listen at verse 39 jesus said behold my hands and my feet that it is i handle me and see for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as he see me have and when he had thus spoken he shewed them his hands and his feet and while they yet believe not for the joy for joy so even though jesus was there you know they touch his hand touch his feet you know, they, they handle him, but yet they believe not. The Bible said for, the, for joy and wondered. He said unto them, have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of an honeycomb. And he took it and he did eat before them. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was with you. So hold on, while I was yet with you. So Jesus was now repeating himself, repeating and speaking to these disciples some of the same words that he would have spoken to them before the crucifixion. After he came from the grave, he had to go back among them and speak the same word to them. Why? When Jesus was among them, although he taught them many things and some things they retained and kept with them. But there were a lot of things that the apostles still didn't understand. And it was so because the life of the flesh was not yet released. And the life of the flesh is in the blood. Because his blood was not yet shed, there were things that the apostles couldn't understand until that was fulfilled. And Jesus coming back amongst them again and repeat the same words that he spake to them in times past. I hope you're following me. So now that the life of the blood or the life of the flesh was now released upon the earth. Jesus died, was buried, rose from the grave. Now he came back among them for a purpose. He knew that they didn't have understanding of many things. For the time was not yet. You know, there is a fullness of time. Amen. Now when the fullness of time was come, he came among them. And he said, these are the words. He was reminding them. These are the words which I speak unto you. While I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, thus it is written, 
Thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations. You don't need to remember any other name. You need to remember the name of Jesus. Among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and that's what the apostles did. Because now they have the understanding. Because Jesus came and break bread again with them. And open up their understanding. Because now the life in the flesh, which is the blood, which is in the blood, was released. And now salvation now was full. The process, the work that he came to do was complete. So now he needed to activate those men whom he had chosen, the 12, uh, you know, the, 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 the apostles, and repentance and remission of sins, he told them, should be preached in his name. And he said that among all nations, you got to start in Jerusalem. The apostles did went to Jerusalem. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, Peter being in Jerusalem, after the Holy Ghost was poured out, when he ministered unto them, they said unto him, men and brethren, what must we do? The Bible said, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So why some people have a problem with the name when Jesus told his apostles that it must be preached in his name and they must start at Jerusalem. The apostles being obedient to God's word went to Jerusalem having received power from an eye. The apostle Peter who received the keys, meaning he got the right away, amen, to unlock understanding by preaching, rightly dividing the word, break it. Listen, Peter, he broke the bread right on the day of Pentecost. When Peter began to preach, he was piercing that flesh of Jesus, meaning he was unlocking understanding of the words of Jesus Christ that the people would have known what they must do to be saved. Amen. He broke bread, right? And so the people knew what was needed. Praise God. Moving right along. Let me step on the gas. Now, this is a very familiar passage of scripture. And I think one of the brethren made mention, amen, of this. Amen. I have here, let me move this out of the way. The bread and the blood must be handled with care. And every man must eat and drink of the same. Let me repeat it. The bread and the blood must be handled with care and every man must eat and drink of the same. Now let me get down into this and I think I'm close to closing now. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 30. This is scripture I think many of us would refer to as a scripture that is dealing with the subject matter of the Lord's Supper. Let's get into this. At verse 23, it says, and this was the Apostle Paul writing to the Corinthians church. And the message is for us today. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. Keep in mind, Paul was not with the twelve. When Jesus had the, what we call the communion session with them, he was not among the 12. Remember that. In those times, Paul was a persecutor of the church. All right? So he was not with the 12, sitting and eating bread and wine with Jesus, or with the, the apostles, the other disciples. But yet Paul had understanding because he got revelation from Jesus Christ. Watch this. He said, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body. So the bread 
symbolize the body of Christ. Remember, the body of Christ was the word made flesh. And he said, this is my body, which was broken for you. Hold it. Prophecy stated that none of Jesus' bones could have been broken. And we read in the earlier scripture, I believe in the book of Luke 24. No, not Luke 24. Um, can't come to mind now. No. But nonetheless, we read in the book of scripture that when they went to the, 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 the men who were on the cross, on the left and on the right hand, beside Jesus, and they went and they broke the feet of the man on the left hand and the man on the right hand of Jesus. And when they came to Jesus with the same intention to break his foot or his feet, they did not do it because they realized that he had already given up the ghost. Amen. So not one of his bones were broken. Don't you hear? Amen. The psalmist David in Psalms, I believe, 34, that says, Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. And the Bible said, not one of his bones shall Amen. be broken. Not one of his bones shall be broken. Amen. Yes. Amen. So not one of Jesus' bones was broken. But watch this. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 24, And when he had given thanks, he break bread and said, Take, eat, this is my body. But hold on, Jesus' body wasn't broken. He knew his side was pierced, but there were no broken bones. So what is this? Let's keep reading. And he said to them, take and eat. So this is aligned with the same message in John 6 about eating his flesh because he said, this bread symbolizes my body. And he said, take and eat. Listen, when God's word is being preached, you have a responsibility to take heed all you hear. And when you hear something for you, you got to take it. You got to reach out with your mind and your heart and take it. If you shut out your heart, if you shut your heart, and you have a stony heart, then the, the word of God that's supposed to be entering into your mind and your soul and your spirit is being hindered. But when you take of it and eat, you'll find that your mind begin to transform. Amen. Don't you hear the scripture said this? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. The scripture says, be not conformed to this world, but be he transformed by the renewing of your mind. The only way your mind can be reprogrammed, renewed. It takes God's word to enter into you. You got to take it. So when Jesus said to them, listen, this is my body. He said, take and eat of this bread, for this is my body. What do you mean, Jesus? Listen, the word of God, you must take it and you must eat it. You must eat it up. You must love it. Let me keep going. He said, this is my body, which was broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. So every time that they break bread, amen, and take up that bread and eat, they are doing it in remembrance of Jesus. Now, hold it. I know some of us are only thinking carnally as to naturally in terms of the communion that we do as outline, where you get bread and wine and you eat, and you take that alone to say by so partaking of the same, you're remembering Jesus. Now, I'm not going to tell you that it does not have symbolism and represent what the Lord says, but there's a greater message in it. The greater message in it that you must get is this. 
that when God's word is delivered by his servants, every jack man and woman must have a hunger and a thirst for God that when they hear the word, they grab everything, every nourishment that they can get for the word instead of dishing it to somebody. You say, no, Lord, even me. Give me some more in my plate. Amen. Because it's the love for the word that is going to allow Christ to form in you. It is the love for the word of God that is going to transform your mind. It's the love for the word of God that is going to give you the faith that you need to have in this last days. You can eat and partake of the literal communion of drinking wine and eating bread and still go to hell. And still not honoring Jesus. For the Bible said the kingdom of God is not meat, nor drink, nor righteousness, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. You can't eat your way into heaven. You can't drink your way into heaven. Except it be you're eating the flesh of Christ and drinking his blood. And in order to eat the flesh of Christ, the bread has to be broken, rightly dividing the word of God and release the life that is in it. And when you take that in your soul and your spirit, it begins to transform your way of thinking. Christ begin to form in you. The mind of Christ will begin to manifest in you. In your thought process, your deeds, how you speak, how you conduct yourself. So don't just look at this scripture. as a scripture about wine and bread. My God, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, and you can't eat your way in. The Bible said at verse 24, in fact, um, verse 25, after the same manner also, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. So there is a New Testament, a new will in his blood. And he said, this do he, and as oft as he drink it, you see, I got to drink it, it in remembrance of me, for as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, he do shoe the Lord's death till he come. Now, you have the communion side where I'm not going to tell you, don't partake of it. But I wanted to focus on the greater part, which is make sure. I think the last, last week I talked about a wise son here at his father's instruction. I want to tell you that you need to love God's word. You need to ask God for understanding that you can get the life that is in, your, in the word of God. Your children are being rebellious. There is a word that is there for that. There's a word to deal with that. But the life in it has to be released. It has to be rightly divided. So you can know how to deal with a rebellious child, a broken family. There's a way. Amen. God have a word for that. You're suffering from addiction. There is a word for that. You're suffering from, uh, for de from depression and oppression and suicidal thoughts. There is a word for that. You're addicted to pornography. There is a word for that. You're addicted to rum. There is a word for that. You're a womanizer. There is a word for that. You're a liar and a thief. There is a word that if it is rightly divided, if it is broken down for you, God can set you free and give you life, more abundant life. And watch this. The Bible said this at verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Listen, let me read it again. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let every man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Let me explain this. When the word of God is echoed in your ears, when God sent his word to you, you're not... You, the mindset that we are to have towards the word of God 
is to allow the word of God to search us. The Bible said judgment must first begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, where shall the sinners and the ungodly appear? When we hear God's word and we do nothing with God's word, we don't respond in the right way to God's word in truth, then we're not honoring the Lord. If we take on God's name and we're not living up to the standard of the name, we're dishonoring God. We're bearing, uh, we're, 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 we're taking the Lord's name in vain. Amen. Having God's name on, the, on you is not something to be treated lightly. Amen. And so when you hear God's word, amen, you're supposed to come with a heart. The psalmist David said, thy word, O Lord, have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Drinking wine and eating bread cannot put you in the kingdom of God. I want to say that. It can buy you a ticket in the kingdom of God. Drinking wine and eating bread can keep you from sin. But the word of God, if you feast upon it, and if you get the blood out of it, my God, it can keep you from sin. The Bible said that verse 29, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh, damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body, that we should not be condemned with the world. When you're not discerning the Lord's body, this is what we're doing. We're not taking heed to the word of God that we hear. Not discerning the Lord's body is when we know we have sin in our life and we hear God's word, which is an act of his mercy, that we may know our flaws and shortcomings so that we can change, and we make no move to make the change. We're not discerning the Lord's body, God's word. Likewise, you can always partake of the communion that is happening among the brethren. I'm not knocking that, but I'm showing you the greater part. The Bible said this, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Hold it. Eating bread and drinking wine. Don't heal your body. But when you receive God's word, and you hear God's word, and you really believe the word of Jesus Christ, if you are sick, if you are suffering from a condition, then you will call upon the elders for prayer. The Bible says, if there be any sick among you, let him do what? Call upon the elders of the church. Let them anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. The Bible even goes as far as said that if he commit any sin, it shall be forgiven. Many of us and many of God's people die sick because they have no faith in God's word the way they should. Many of God's people suffer from conditions that they need not to suffer from perpetually because they have not applied the word of God to the life the way they should. So many of them have fallen asleep spiritually and literally. They're spiritually sleeping. The word of God is not accurate in their life, in their mind, in their heart. Amen. And so when they should be standing up for God, like, no, they're fearful. They're expressing the same fear like the world. When you ought not to be so, because if you were feeding on the bread of life, that bread that came down from heaven, you will know that he's a keeper. He's a sustainer. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says this. For if we would judge ourselves, I talk about judgment must first begin at the house of God. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chasing of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. So it's just the love of God again to us. So when the Lord allows certain things to come our way, it's a chastening because God loves you. 
and him don't want us to be condemned with the world. So brethren, we got to love God's word, which is the Lord's flesh, and in it is his blood, which is the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are to grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jeremiah 48 10 says this, curse be he that do it, the work of the Lord deceitfully. So when a man do God's work with deceit, the Bible says curse. And cursed be he that keep it back his heart, keep it back his sword from blood. Hold it. The word of God is the preacher's sword and our sword, every man's sword. And you cannot be afraid to swing the word, to swing the sword because they don't want to spill blood. Meaning because they don't want people to be offended. When Jesus began to teach concerning eating his flesh and drinking his blood, Jesus asked them, are you offended also? People were offended. Some of the disciples stopped following him because of the teaching. And so the Bible said to the preacher, Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. And cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. When God give you that sword, when God give you a word to speak, speak it diligently and faithfully. 2 Corinthians, the apostle Paul speak to this. In 2 Corinthians 4, verse 2, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. When bread is not broken right, that's a problem. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So the apostle was mindful how he handled God's word, how he delivered the word of God, how he break bread to God's people. I'm not talking about the bread that you go and buy at the bakery. Praise the Lord. And in closing, I have here when bread is broken right, it impacts the soul of men. Acts 2, 43, 45. All of us know this. The Bible said at verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and prayer. That means the word of God was always being taught, being preached, and the people were getting understanding. Here's why I know the people were getting understanding. Verse 43, and the fear of God came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. God approved them. Why? They were breaking bread right. And they were doing it steadfastly. And they were praying. So they got results. And all that believed were together and had all things common. And listen, look at the impact breaking bread has. When the bread is broken right, look. They sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. When the word of God is taught right amongst God's people, it will begin to build the very characteristics of Christ to them that receive it gladly. And you'll see the love of God on display in the midst of God's people. Praise the Lord. So I want to say to all of us that we got to not just only eat Amen. The flesh, but you got to drink the blood. To my unsafe friends who are not sure who Jesus is. Amen. Jesus Christ is our great God and Savior. And there is none else but he. You want to be right with God, you got to repent of your sins. You got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And when you so do, God promised, and he cannot lie, that he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is the word that the Lord gave me to deliver tonight. And I pray that your understanding would have come open and would have received thus, saith the Lord. God bless you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord.
Pastor Joseph, if you're there, sir, I'd like to hand over to you. Praise the Lord. You can give God thanks freely. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's just take ourselves off mute for a few moments and just